Welcome to Nextperia's quick learning on how to develop reliable MOSFETs. I'm Adam Brown, I'm a development manager with Nextperia. Really the main answer to how to develop reliable MOSFETs is to build on experience and that's what we have lots of it at Nextperia. So we've been making MOSFETs, trench MOSFETs since 1996. In actual fact they were released for automotive in 1996. That's 21 years of experience of making trench MOSFETs. <laughs> Equally, our major package the LF pack package was released in 2002, 15 years ago, and again that was released for automotive a couple of years later. And in total, we've, we've produced about 5 billion of the LF pack and shipped 1 billion to automotive. So there's a massive wealth of experience. And it's on that experience that you can develop the double MOSFETs. <clears throat> we see that reflected back in the PPM of our products. So here we have a chart showing the parts per million failing units of our MOSFETs over a period of time, from back from about 2006 through to current day 2017. And what we plot here, we don't just plot failing units, but we plot every single failure back from customers. So we include devices which have failed for electrical overstress, because of ESD failures, or even also including MOSFETs which have come back for no trouble found. But this is the key, by looking at our failures, analyzing those failures, we can find what problems there are, put those problems right, and then stop them happening in the future with our future, future generations. <clears throat> and what you can see is for the last seven or eight years, we've been consistently producing MOSFETs with a performance of less than one part per million, a truly excellent performance. <clears throat> so with all that experience, how do we reflect that back into our new generations of MOSFETs? There are several key areas. Let's first talk about silicon processing. It's very, very key that we reuse old technology, reuse proven modules, silicon process modules. Change is the one thing that can give unreliability. So we keep on reusing as much as we can. For example, our gate oxide processes are basically the same processes we've been running for more than 20 years. So we've got good silicon. What about designing the dyes? So there, again, if you want to have a reliable product, it's very important to use conservative designs to ensure that we have wide reliability margins. For more with the learning we've had, we make sure we've got very well documented design rules. We can check our designs against the design rules to check that nothing strange is happening. And then even before we commit to silicon, we have a very careful review process. So we'll check the designs to check that they're manufacturable, that they can be tested, that they're reliable, and also we can then assemble this silicon really well. <clears throat> we've got the good silicon, we've designed it well. The next part of the process is to get the silicon assembled. So the next period's philosophy, always assembly, always we, we've got the choice of doing this in-house, we're going to subcontractors. To get good reliable MOSFETs, our process has always been to keep this as an in-house process. If we keep the testing and the assembly in-house, we can get the testing in-house, we can get very fast feedback of any issues that are coming along, and also the testing at the assembly process is the last chance we've got to check that the product is good. This is our last chance to check and protect customers, but in-house we can guarantee that we're protecting our customers. <clears throat> So let's talk a bit more about testing. By doing, using re-silicon processes, reusing those, having good de by design, and doing assembly in-house, that will probably achieve something like a high PPM level, four or five PPM. That's what we had for many years. But testing is also the critical issue to get from three or four PPM down to consistently below one PPM. We need to, there will always be some weak devices, and testing is the way to screen out those weak devices and to get us below one part per million. We can use special algorithms to make sure we screen out those weak devices. Also key, we have a data sheet and we, of course we'll test the data sheet to guarantee it to the customer, but we apply testing beyond the data sheet limits to find weak devices and make sure they're not shipped. <clears throat> not just parametric testing, but also we apply special tests, st stress tests to try and destroy any weak devices. Top devices that wouldn't show up in the parametric value, but generally weak devices, we screen them with a stress test to make sure we destroy them. And finally, you know, on the data sheet, we have many, many parameters we test to, but we do a lot of testing with additional parameters, which aren't data sheet parameters, but again, allow us to identify strange and weak devices. <coughs> now, we've now made good MOSFETs. We've got silicon processing, we've designed them, we've assembled them, we've tested them. Before release, we go through a qualification process. Everybody does. And this is absolutely key. It's the last chance to really find out any issues. And there's no limit Nothing better than testing, testing, testing. The more testing we do, the more chance we've got of detecting problems early on in our development process. And of course, there are industry standards. AEC Q101 has a whole set of requirements that we have to meet, but that only takes you so far. So in the next period, our standards always do twice the duration 
but the AECQ101 means. So for, instead of 1,000 hours, we'll do 2,000 hours of life testing in many, many, type, many situations. <clears throat> and then the final part of the process it almost takes us back to where we started from. When we get customer failures, it's very, very critical to work out why they've happened. During the qualification process, if we have failures, it's very critical to find out why they've happened. So failure analysis is absolutely a key part of the process. Doing excellent failure analysis, finding out what's gone wrong, and then documenting that, fixing the problems, and then carrying that back into almost a cycle here so we don't create the same problems in the next generation. So it's where we started. How do you develop reliable MOSFETs? Building on experience. Thank you for listening. And if you'd like to know more information, have a look at nextspeeder.com. <laughs>